On today's Top Tip Tuesday, we're going to be exploring a subject in X particles, and this is a really clever trick, which means that we can get some pretty convincing looking destruction techniques of polygon objects using particles. It simulates fast, there's loads of animation control here, and it remains procedural throughout. We're going to be exploring the XP Fragmenter, so let's jump into cinema and we'll get started. Here we go then, let's disintegrate our Insidian Wolf. So first we'll go to our Emitters folder and we'll go to Object and we'll create a new emitter. In the Object tab, we want to emit from the Wolf, so we need to change the emitter shape from Rectangle to Object. We'll then drag in our Insidian Wolf to the Object Link field. We want to emit these particles, yes, from the Polygon Center and we want one particle for every polygon. So to do that, we can go one particle per source element. Click on that. Now we can go to the Emission tab, change the Emission mode from Rate to Shot, and we'll take all of the speed off. So now if we go forward a frame, we have one particle in the middle of every polygon of our object. So what we're going to do now is use the XP Fragmenter. So let's go to Generators, and we'll go to the Generators list and bring in an XP Fragmenter. And what we'll do is we'll make the wolf a child of the Fragmenter just to stay organized. You don't have to do this. And then if we go to the Fragmenter itself, it needs an emitter. Look here, what emitter do you want to use? So let's drag in our emitter. And we're going to change the mode from Faces Objects. Now this is going to generate a new polygon and make it its own object for every polygon in the model, which is going to be a lot of objects. We can make it more efficient if we do Faces Polys. So it's just going to generate one object but loads of separate polygons. So if we make our original wolf invisible now and go forward a frame, it generates the particles and then look, it's generated new polygons in the shape of our wolf head. Let's just make our particles invisible. Now, we've got a problem. We haven't got any smooth shading here. So let's go back to our fragmenter. We can click on connect polys which will then enable smooth shading, so that's great. And then we want to use the material. So to get materials to work, we have to copy the texture tag from the object and put it on the fragmenter itself. But it's not mapped correctly. It's mapping that texture to every single polygon. So we have to go to the fragmenter and just make sure we've chi uh, ticked remap textures. And there we go. And now we're back to square one. But every single polygon face now is its separate entity and it's controllable via the particles. So if we go to modifiers, motion modifiers, and bring in a wind, for example, let's bring this wind fan up here, hit R to rotate, move it around 90. So if we hit play now, the wind is going to blow the particles, which in turn blows the polygon faces. Excellent. Let's hide those lines. So now what we want to do is a couple of things. Let's make our original object a collision object so the particles bounce off it. That's going to look good. So we'll highlight it, go to Tags, Extensions, Insidium, XP Collider. Let's reduce the bounce, add a bit of friction, hit play, and now those particles are bouncing off that collision geometry. That's looking good. So now again we can make the particles invisible. Excellent. So the wind's a bit strong. Let's go to wind object and put it down to maybe 85 centimeters. Okay. Very nice. So we're going to add a bit more movement now. Um, I'm just going to switch off my wind momentarily. We'll go, book, uh, go to the modifiers and we're going to bring in another motion modifier. Let's bring in a XP turbulence and we're going to put the scale down to maybe 30 put the strength up to about 8 and let's just have a look at what this turbulence does on its own so that's looking pretty cool all right and then we're going to use that with the wind so let's switch the wind back on but we only want the turbulence to start taking effect once the particles have started moving with the wind. How are we going to do that? Well, we can do it really easily. If we go to turbulence, we can do data mapping. Let's go to the mapping tab. We're going to add a map. The map, the, the parameter we want to map is the turbulence uh, strength, not the scale. So let's uh, change it to strength. Look, there it is. Turbulent strength and we're going to map this not to the particle age, but to how far the particles traveled. So let's click on that 
And then we're going to set this range minimum, range maximum. The minimum range is going to be zero. The maximum is, say, 30 centimetres. And what this is saying is when the particles have travelled zero centimetres, they will have no turbulent strength applied to them. And as they have travelled further, they'll get more and more turbulent strength until the point they've travelled 30 centimetres and they'll have full turbulent strength. So let's just move it in a bit so they don't get any strength for the first few centimetres of their movement. So the wind moves them first and then the turbulence kicks in. Yes, that looks good. So finally, what we're going to do is, look, let's just add a field to our XP wind so it doesn't affect it immediately. We'll go to wind, fields. We're going to add a linear field. Let's change it to the minus Z. Yeah, and we'll just move that down a bit. Um, let's move this. So we'll just keyframe this linear field. Go to coordinates, hit a keyframe on the Z, then move forwards a few frames, move that across our scene. All right, that looks good. So then let's make the wind invisible and we'll hit play. And there'll be no movement until the wind comes through. Yep. And then the turbulence gets applied. Excellent. So we've got our object being recreated by the fragmenter. Each particle has a polygon. So when we animate those particles, it moves those polygon faces. And we get this really cool looking disintegration look pretty quickly in our viewport.